I want to start out saying before this video even begins, I changed my shirt two times, I think, throughout this video. Simply because I recorded it over three days, because I was trying to get inspiration for the video. So here it is, guys. Yo guys, it's Denny Peterson back again with another tutorial slash talk. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about dealing with labels, the constructive criticism. Um, I wanted to make this video because I know there's like a lot of frustration deal with labels. Also, I want to share some of my great experiences that also comes with it. I'll go over a few things that are a must when sending off your demo and a few things that you should not be doing when sending off your demo. I'll start talking about the track and your opinions on the track. It's always like really important that you look at the track itself and think, is this good? This is this industry standard? Is this something that sh like could be signed? You need to be really realistic about this. Do you believe that the track is good enough compared to other tracks? Like listen to other tracks. Does it compare to the tracks out there? Always look at like, is my track missing something? Is it missing something from in the beginning of the track? Is it missing something in the middle? Is it missing some synth line or something like that? I can guarantee you, like the first couple of tracks you do, there's always going to be something missing. And I suggest you do like five, 10 tracks before consider even sending to a label. I wish I had for sure. I regret sending out some of the tracks because they're like outright embarrassing tracks. They were never replied to, and I understand that today. If I could do it over, I wish I would have, like, not sent them. And if I could do it over again, I wish I was, like, much more quality-oriented than I was back then. Now that your track is good enough, it's time to find the right label. It's not just sending it off to the first, like, label that you find on Google. You should definitely sit down. Find a couple of labels that fit your genre. Take a listen to the back catalog. Some might fit your like your track, some might not. And you should always go for the ones that fit your track. Take a solid listen to the back catalog and, and see if the, like, there's something that resembles your tracks and, and if the quality that your track has like lives up to their quality. Like That's really important. After you find like a label that has the same genre as yours and the same quality-ish, you should like now find out if they if they accept unsolicited demos if that's that's even allowed and if that's allowed it's time to send off your demo guys so submitting a demos you should always and i have to point this out so much you should always send it through the official channels don't be looking up the ARs on facebook or dms on twitter and stuff like that always go for the like the ANR email or something like that. That's so important. It's really important to remember that business is business and personal is like personal. So once you found the uh, ANR email, uh, we should go ahead and send the demo. I'll show you a couple of examples here. One not like how not to send a demo and one how to send a demo. This shows how it's you're not supposed to send an email to a label. In the header you see, like, I put in a lot of emails. Labels don't want that. Labels want you to prioritize them over everyone else. Next you see me calling my track Mix is Fucked. Of course, I shouldn't be sending something like that. That is common sense, but I've seen this. I've seen this happen before. And then I go on to the, like, the text. Uh... It's so basic. Hi, Superstar Mega Records. My track Superstar Mix is fucked. It's ready for you. Please sign and we will get rich. Like, I, I know I'm exaggerating a lot here. Just to prove my point. You should always have more than this. Um, I think I'll go over and like, show you how, you how it should be done right now. So you can see the difference. So, in this email, I send it off to info at mega, uh, supermegastarrecords.com as the only thing. That's the only thing. And I uh, write regarding demo or something like that. I'm not sure how, like exactly how much you should write there. Um, so, after that, I write hi, label name. And then I should be, like, the next line should be like a small introduction of myself. Not a big bio or anything. Uh, the next next section of the email should be an introduction to the track 
and a little bit of a backstory. And last but not least, with like a small bio about it, about yourself, keep it simple. No backstory about your mom and dad and how old how old you are. And like unless you're like 12 years old and like a little genius, like they, it's not gonna matter if you write your like that you're 20 years old and something like that. And always remember to send links to your track, not MP3s. Make sure the links are working properly. I will go over a few of the couple like couple of common mistakes in like just a second. But always remember to post links to like WeTransfer links or like maybe even SoundCloud links. I, I don't know. It's a little bit iffy. Some some people say you should do it and some people say you shouldn't. One of the most common mistakes is that you like you send a SoundCloud link which is a private link and you forgot to press the share button and copy that link instead of the URL that you see. Next thing you should always remember is to enable download on the track so they can download your track and listen to it in high quality because SoundCloud is always less quality than the like the real MP3 that you upload or wave even. Always remember wave over MP3. You should always try to get your track mastered before you send it off to a label. And if that's not possible, you should always remember to like apologize for not mastering the track in advance. And now we have to talk about the follow-up. After you send the demo, don't expect there to be an answer within one hour or something like that. Labels get a lot of demos each day and like they may not have the time to go through it all. Many times the A&R managers are artists themselves, so they usually have like a busy schedule. Like they may, might not even spend more than one or two hours each day listening to the demos from the demo box. If you haven't heard back from them after a couple of weeks, you can always send a reminder to the label, reminding them to get back to you. And if they still don't reply to you, they're quite possibly not interested in having you on their label. And if they reply, but don't want to sign it, don't lose faith. It doesn't mean that the track itself is bad, it just means that they think it doesn't fit them. Always keep going even if you get no's. That shouldn't stop you, but make you want to make tracks even harder. And suddenly, a label will sign your track, trust me. Uh, but always remember to make music because you like doing it. Don't aim for the B-Pod number one position, because trust me, you lose all the like the fun in making music. And your productivity will go way down, because you will always just try to like copy what's already there. Which means no originality at all. I just want to go over this swiftly. Accepting a no is probably gonna be the hardest for you in the beginning. I remember back when I was trying to get signed in the beginning. I was getting no after no after no. And I, I, I remember it, it brought me down to a point where I was like, I want to stop making music. But I just kept going. And one day, I made a whole track within 12 hours, I'd say. Night and day. And that track got signed the day after. So the bottom line is, just keep going. And at some point, you're probably gonna get signed. And over to the next thing, you should, like, if you get replies from the label and they say no, don't be afraid to ask what you could have done better for the next time if you want to send them another demo. Some labels might not even answer that, so of course you shouldn't be bothering the NR more than that. At this point, you should just try to get feedback from producers at your stage or even above your stage if you can. There's several places you can do that. You can post your like your things in Facebook groups. There's a lot of Facebook groups that does this. You can post your things on Reddit. There's a uh, Reddit that's called like slash r slash EDM producers. They sometimes give feedback. There's way different ways of doing this. Point is, you should find someone who's like in like in the genre that you do, or someone who has like mixing capabilities. Like, above average. So this was all I had for you guys. I really hope someone could use this. I know, like, a lot of the people that watch my YouTube channel doesn't need this. Like, a lot of them are already signed. But I want the newcomers out there to know how to deal with labels. And I do realize that a lot of the things I said are, are, are personal. But it's my interpretation of what's good. And I really feel like that's really important to understand after watching this video. 
So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and hit the subscribe button if you want me to make more videos. I realize this is not my best video, but I hope you can enjoy it anyway. Thanks for watching guys.